Happy New Year to all, and welcome back to GP Outdoors. Thought it might be nice to take a little walk down memory lane, just kind of to touch on some of the highlights of what we did over 2021. This particular picture here probably brings back some memories for all of us. It sure does for me. This was the worst ice storm we had all last winter, and it was pretty memorable. You can see the temperatures have warmed up so much that I don't even need a coat. Might explain why a lot of the snow turned to ice and then began to melt. But I remember it was a lot of fun blowing snow through that forest that day. And that's how we ended the year 2020. I believe this was December 29th, clearing the driveway to bring in the new year 2021. Before we get too much into some of the memories, I wanted to sincerely thank all of my subscribers, old and new, for all of your support and for hanging with me over the last year and for a lot of you, many years. I realize that you have a lot of choices on YouTube. This platform has exploded. In fact, when you go through the analytics on YouTube, you have a lot of choices and a lot of different channels to watch that do very similar things to what I do here. For example, there are over 36,000 unique different YouTube channels that showcase tractors. In the outdoor space itself, in general, there are over 21,000 channels all independent separate channels so you've got a lot of content that you could be watching every night and carol and i and my family greatly appreciate all your support and that a lot of you tune in week after week not to mention your online friendships i know for sure that a lot of our new subscriber base over the last year are primarily made up or largely made up of new tractor owners, just like myself a few years ago. So I'm hopeful that some of the tips or the advice or the things that I've learned, both the hard way as well as from other subscribers, are helpful to you good folks. You may recall as we went through January, February, I did a number of videos or a series on the differences between using the front blower and the rear blade and how I've learned over the years to use both. And I hope that was a lot of help to you folks. But it was kind of an important series for me because I've always had so many questions on both of them. Although I've mentioned it many times before, the last number of winters have been very unseasonal. We've had far higher temperatures and far less snowfall than we ever have had historically. But that doesn't stop the winds and it certainly doesn't stop the blowdowns. You pretty much can guarantee that every week to two weeks, I'm going to come down that driveway and there's going to be a tree across it. That didn't change. What did change though, as it has again so far this year, is the lack of snow. As I mentioned to you folks before, I used to be riding my snowmobile in November. We had that much snow. But this shot here reflects the highest single snowfall we had all last winter and I believe it was only about 10 inches, 10 to 11 inches. There are years gone by when I would be walking across my front lawn and the snow would be right up to just below my waist. There's times I had to go down to my shed and I'd have to take my snowmobile because I don't own snowshoes. Not anymore. Along with the wonderful growth that we experienced on the channel this year, we also experienced a very significant growth in product opportunities. As you may know, over the last 12 months in 2022, we got to share and talk about new products such as the Easton Meat Ultra, the Axis, the Thru-Night TC20 flashlight, Reolink Argus PT camera, the Woodox Sling. We also got to witness firsthand the Easton Meat 22 MB wood processor. What a machine. And we also had the Oregon CS325 electric chainsaw. We got to test out the Briggs & Stratton power pressure washer and towards the end of the year we were fortunate enough to find some good folks down in the U.S. that create a product called the Firewood Pro Sizer for marking your firewood lengths. And lastly, I shared with you the installation of my Garmin Dashcam Mini 2. Wonderful unit, love it still to this day, but the important part of that installation was not the Dashcam. It was this really unique connector 
that I came across from Dongar Technologies down in the States that made it quick, simple, efficient, and pretty much hidden from view. Really nice, innovative product from a startup or a gentleman out in California that makes them out of his garage. Found a great idea, tried to see if anybody else liked it, and I still love it. It's a great connector, and I wish them all the best. But I think what's most interesting is not the products that we got to see together. It's the amount of work that I've had to do now during the week that takes me away from editing and making videos. Having to screen through and do research on the literally dozens and dozens and dozens of product opportunities that get sent to me week after week now. It's become commonplace that I spend several hours a week, if not more, responding to marketing companies and manufacturers who are asking me or proposing a relationship for me to provide their products on the channel to you. That's the hidden story. Notwithstanding the potential financial impacts or opportunities or other, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into trying to vet those products, research them, check online for different types of customer reviews, the quality builds, and those kind of things, which bring me to the conclusion or the decision as to whether I respectfully decline the offer or in fact ask them to send it to me and I share it with you. I can assure you that the products I just mentioned are literally a fraction of the product opportunities that have been presented to us on the channel over the last year. It's really exploded. The difficult thing is the time spent researching them to determine whether or not I think it's something that's got a good quality or a value for the price that you may enjoy seeing. And in some cases, my research failed me a little bit and I've spent a lot of time working with a product only to get to a point where I identify to the manufacturer that I don't think it's going to be a positive review and it might be better that we just scrap it and not put it forward to you. But hey, I guess that's part of the growth and I'm, I'm certainly willing to do it. Plus we get to see some new products together and I get to vet through a lot more. <laughs> but a mainstay of hanging out on the concession road with our good friends and neighbors is firewood. That whether it's negative 20 degrees outside or positive 20, the guys always love to get together, buck up some wood and split some firewood. We were fortunate again this year, Andrew from Easton Made dropped by in February and dropped off a new splitter. It was the Easton Made Ultra. And I think between Husky Bob, Guy and I, we love that splitter. Great, speedy, fast, powerful little unit, high table height, and a four-way wedge. Some of the power of having this community on the YouTube channel, many of you will recall. We worked a lot and talked back and forth with Andrew about the size of the pusher plate on that Ultra. And as you all know now, he re-engineered it and redesigned it to be a little bit bigger to try to minimize the number of times that a round of wood would ride up on the wedge. And it worked. In large part, or in most part, due to all the feedback that you good folks shared with me over those coming months. We also spent a lot of time and did a bit of a series on PPE or safety, especially chainsaw safety or safety working in the forest. The more I've learned over the last few years about the potential dangers of dealing with a chainsaw or with different types of equipment such as a splitter, the tractor, the more attuned to safety I've become. And hey, maybe I'm just getting a little older. And sure, I get the safety Sally comments all the time, but whether it's from a forestry helmet the right gloves, or the right chainsaw boots, I think the money invested is worth it. But hopefully some of those reviews or the information that I've shared with you has been beneficial to you, especially if you're someone that's new to property and just starting out as I was more than a decade ago. I think probably the most interesting and most likely the most rewarding project I did on the property this year was finally starting to clear those trails through the forest for my wife and my daughters. I mean, <laughs> they were only asking me for four or five years, but we had done a couple of hundred feet of trails, as you know, with the old B2601 previously, but renting that mini excavator for five to seven days increased the productivity or the efficiency of getting through that forest and clearing it much better and much easier than I could have done just alone with the tractor, you know, one foot at a time. I have to be honest, I was a little reluctant 
at first because I'd never run a mini excavator before. But I have to tell you, they are actually a very simple machine to run. You just have to take your time, be safe, and pretty soon after the first couple of days, you start to become more and more efficient and more effective with it. Did a wonderful job of clearing almost a total of 1,500 feet of trails through the forest. And although I still, next year and the years to come, I have some box blade work to do, some grading work to do on some of those trails, being able to clear them all out, at least at a rough level, put me forward quite a bit and certainly made my family happy. Plus, I have to be honest, it was a lot of fun running that excavator. This has been the case for several years now. The channel has become very important to me and has in fact become more or less a forum for learning for me. I've learned a lot from you folks, and this year was no different. Continue to learn a lot of new things and to benefit from such a wide subscriber base with such a vast array of expertise and knowledge. And as I mentioned before, I greatly appreciate the time that so many of you take to help provide advice or suggestions, not only to me, but to other members of the channel community. We also got a chance to get back out to neighbor guy's target range and started to clear the meadow on the west side of the range. Got a lot of work done this year as well as a lot of grading to it, but there's still a lot to do, which hopefully will continue back in the spring or the summer of 2022. The woodshed, my little woodshed that I'm trying to finish, unfortunately got delayed this year, as you folks know again, because of wood prices. And by the time prices started to come back down to something at least reasonable, we were well into firewood season. So it looks like that one's gonna be on top for this summer again, and I'm hoping we can finally finish it. So I have a place to store my wood as well as some of my implements. In addition to that, we already have a few new products from manufacturers lined up coming at you this year. I'm pretty excited about a couple of them. And in addition to that, we're just going to go back at those trails in the forest, do our regular maintenance as you normally see, whether it's firewood, whether it's grading the driveway, or other types of property maintenance. As you folks know on the channel, I don't create content for the sake of content. What you see is just what I do here every day or every week. And hopefully it's a benefit to some of you, especially the newer property owners. This year was no different as it pertained to property maintenance. One thing I learned the hard way years ago, the bigger the property, the more the maintenance. It's not like the house in the city. There's always something to be done. And although some of the tasks are enjoyable or a lot of fun, a lot of it is just work or chores that you just have to get done. And quite often, as you know, I fall behind on them. There are always a number of projects. There's driveway spots on the driveway to be graded. Some chores or maintenance items that you just want to get done. And of course, with the impending winter, and as you get closer to winter, the priority, the urgency of those projects becomes a little more heightened. So you got to get out there before it's too late. The way we processed or we managed firewood over the years, as we talked about this year, has changed quite dramatically. And this year was no different. With the addition of the log trailer build, which I had a lot of fun doing with my neighbor Guy. <laughs> okay, maybe it was fun except for painting it. The log trailer turned out to be a very invaluable tool in the forest. Instead of dragging logs or skidding them out or splitting them down there and hauling them up and touching wood more than two or three times, we were able to grapple those logs on it, haul it up, and in this case, there was kind of an exciting reason for it. Because we knew that our good friend Andrew Eason was gonna be coming around the lot at some point in October, and he was gonna be bringing a big 22 MB wood processor for us. That meant we needed to haul logs and get them up there, so we had lots of logs to feed it while we had it on the premise. It was a lot of fun, really enjoyed seeing Andrew and Jerry with a G as always. And the machine, incredible, absolutely incredible. I wish we had a need for it or I could somehow justify that wood processor because it sure changes the dynamic on processing wood out of the forest, hands down. After the wood processor left, of course we went back to cutting and splitting firewood the old way. Good friends, a little bit of time outside in the fresh air in the forest. 
And there's Husky Bob, still trying to preach the virtues of his beloved Husqvarna's. I'm sure it's a good saw, or they make good saws, but I think I'll stick with my still. As you know, for the guys on the concession road, firewood is kind of a mainstay of the activities we do throughout the summer and especially in the fall. I've come to learn that it's not just about splitting the firewood to make sure everybody's got heat for the winter. It's about spending time with good friends and neighbors, having a laugh, enjoying each other's company, and getting together out in a serene environment such as the forest, and actually accomplishing a task or accomplishing things together. There's a lot more to firewood than just splitting the firewood. And I know, as many of you have reminded me, that I'm very, very fortunate to have found such good neighbors and friends to spend my days with. As you know, with the arrival of December, also came the arrival of the Easton Made Axis Wood Splitter. What a machine. Seems like when you think things can't get any better or more productive, Andrew Easton shows up with a big smile on his face and a big machine behind his pickup truck. And this time it was no different. We have really enjoyed using this Axis. It's early days, but my goodness, it has fast become a favorite down the concession road. Quite often what you don't see on the videos is all the neighbors down the concession who eventually hear about this machine and have to drop by and watch us operating it. It's become quite a hit on the concession road up here. With the arrival of the Axis, but we had to say goodbye to the Easton Made Ultra. But in true Andrew Easton fashion, and with a kind heart and a lot of generosity, he thought that perhaps maybe somebody might benefit from having their very first wood splitter, or perhaps a wood splitter they need. So instead of taking the Ultra back and reselling it used, we did a Christmas giveaway of the Easton Made Ultra. And I probably couldn't have found any more deserving people than Bill and Janet Rogers from down in the U.S. who won the splitter just before Christmas Day. Bill and Janet live in a very, very remote area in Northwest California. And in fact, they run a wildlife sanctuary. They're pretty much homesteading it up there. Not a lot of automation and not a lot of help, as you can see. When I reached out to them to tell them that they'd won the wood splitter, they couldn't believe it. According to Bill, Janet couldn't stop crying because it's a piece of equipment they needed really badly. And I'm so happy that they received it. They told me that they were so remote that they had to make arrangements to have the machine delivered at a nearby town about an hour or an hour and a half away from where their cabin or their wildlife sanctuary is. And Andrew Tudor's word, loaded it up on a flatbed before Christmas and they should have it this week. I wanted to congratulate you both, Bill and Janet, and also thank you for all the good work you do at the Wildlife Sanctuary. So hey, there are a lot of other things I could have talked about, and I know it's been a long video. Hopefully it's been enjoyable or entertaining for you. I recognize that a lot of us have been through a lot of hardships over the last year to two years. Uh, health challenges, or lost loved ones, or suffered financial loss, or other types of difficulties. And it certainly hasn't been easy for many, many people, including my family. We've had our share. I found in my life that crisis tends to create one of two different outcomes. It either brings people together in support of each other, or in some cases it rips them apart. At the end of each video, I always ask you folks to be kind to one another. I think if there's any time we've seen in the last decade or longer, this is the time to be kind. And I hope all of you will. As I wrap up the video, I've received a number of different pictures from our subscribers, and if you've got another minute or so to stick around, I'm going to roll those pictures right now as we close out the video. I wish each and every one of you all of the best of happiness and success for 2022. Let's get past this pandemic, let's put it behind us, and let's get back to living and seeing our families again and enjoying each other's company. Thanks again from the bottom of my heart for all your support, and I hope to keep talking with you folks and see you again in 2022. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers.